Okay then, let's have a look at our uh, reinforced concrete beam, uh, sorry, slab in our building. And we're going to design this slab based on a meter width, although it's much longer than a meter, to get the numbers to come out uh, in, in easier values. We will just design this on a one meter wide strip. And although this is supported on downstand beams, so these downstand beams are that the support, the actual support conditions, what we'll say is that these downstand beams are not going to be designed to take torsion. Uh, it would be very difficult in practical terms to do that. Um, we'd end up with torsion links and the torsional flexibility of these elements is such that any attempt to resist the torsion would result in excessive rotational deflections. And um, it would result in, in, in the need for very substantial sections to resist those torsions. So we will say that these will just uh, rotate under any torsions that are applied to them and therefore they don't apply any external uh, moment reaction at their points. So we can say then that the uh, points are a series of uh, supports or a series of pins or a continuous slab um, let's just redraw that, get rid of those and draw those afterwards. Um, we've got our slab and we're going to say it's a planar slab, although it's a meter deep. We're going to design it in two dimensions um, and that's why we've chosen a meter strip so that the uh, per meter run um, values of our UDL are the same as per meter squared. So in actual fact, in reality, every meter has one meter squared worth of load on it, but we are ignoring the third dimension and just designing this as two dimensional uh, planar structure. And therefore our um, W, which is in kilonewtons per meter squared in reality for the line beam, the, the two dimensional plane beam that we're looking at, W can be represented in kilonewtons per meter run because we've got a one meter um, width. So this kilonewton per meter squared is multiplied by one meter, which gives us kilonewtons per meter. Okay, and we're going to idealize this structure as by saying it has um, pin supports because they cannot uh, apply any external moment because they, 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 they won't take torsions. Um, so we could say that that was a fixed pin. And these are rolled pins um, to, to make sure that there is no horizontal forces generated. Um, it's good practice to, to, to idealize those as rollered pins. Okay, so that is our idealized structure. Under load, this structure will undergo deformations. Uh, it, we will allow rotations, so, so there's no slab here or here to provide uh, internal moments. So that end is free to rotate, um, but over these supports, we, we've we got an internal moment. So these two internal supports will provide an internal uh, re restraint. Sorry about my drawing. You get the general idea. So that is how the slab uh, deforms under this UDL that we apply. 
um, the uniformly distributed load of W. At this point and at this point, um, we have connection between this slab and this slab, and then this slab and this slab. So that provides internal restraints against rotation. So there is no rotation here, no rotation here at, at the very point of uh, support. At this point of support, we do get a rotation. And at this point of support, we get a rotation too, okay? So we can um, split that into our <clears throat> three separate slabs that we're going to consider as part of the moment distribution exercise. And we can see then that this is allowed to rotate uh, and then it comes up to a point where that is fixed. So this is not allowed to rotate, but this is allowed to rotate under load. This central slab, again, it's not allowed to rotate there. It will undergo some deformation like that and it won't be allowed to rotate there, okay? So we will get that deformed shape for the central slab, so you can see that it's actually different to to, to this slab. Our um, grid lines are one, two, this is for the slab, single span in slab in our example, three and four are our grid lines. So this is one, two, three, and four. Again, our, our grid lines from our drawing. Uh, this slab is restrained by the adjacent slab at this point, so it's not allowed to rotate. However, at this end, it's free to rotate. Um, so we've got these three different slabs, um, and, and we've just imagine we imagine that we cut them, looking at them independently initially, to provide our what we call our fixed end moments. So we can see then that this is idealized as a pin with a fixed end line beam. This slab uh, two three. So this is slab one two. So two, three is again fixed and it's fixed at both ends this time. And then three to four is a slab which is fixed to its adjacent slab, two, three, and pinned at this end, okay? So those are our <clears throat> three, uh, slabs, three separate slabs. Um, the stiffness of this, the K value, the K coefficient stiffness is equal to, for, for a pinned fixed, is three times Young's modulus times the second moment of area divided by the length. So what that's saying is, is as the Young's modulus increases, this, this beam is stiffer. Uh, as the I value, the second moment of area, increases this beam gets stiffer and as l increases this beam gets more flexible so the longer it is the, the less stiff it is so that l goes on the on on the bottom is inversely proportional to that for a fixed fixed end the stiffness is 4 pi over l again we were not, not going to prove these again we just get these from our standard tables and similar to 1, 2, 3, 4 has a K value, K stiffness coefficient of uh, 3 EI over L. Um, and that gives us our K values. So the K value of the support is the sum of the Ks on either side. So K of the support is 3 plus 4 EI. So 7 EI over L, as is this K of support 3, which is 7 EI over L. And we will use those values. We don't need to know what the Young's modulus is or the 
uh, I second moment of areas or indeed the L length because in our problem they are all constants um, so we they will cancel out as we'll see when we come to work out the distribution factors for our moment distribution uh, the other thing we need to get from our text is that for a pinned fixed beam end the um, fixed end moment is equal to w small w l squared over eight and for a fixed fixed end fixed end moments are w l squared over 12. again we're not going to prove those we just take those from our level four um, studies and we just look them up in a textbook now again FEM for this one it's a fixed end and a pinned end so the fixed end moment for that is WL squared divided by 8 okay now we'll use these ratios 3EI over L divided by 7EI over L so this has a um, distribution factor of 3 sevenths because everything else cancels out. This one is 4 EI over L divided by 7 EI over L, so that's 4 sevenths. And again, all, all the other, the EI and the L cancel out because they're all constant in our case. And again, this side, 4 sevenths, and the distribution factor on this side is 3 sevenths. And that's our starting point for the moment distribution exercise that we will undertake for this structure.